Hey everyone, this is Michael with Christopher Street Tours, and on today's episode of Queer History, we're going to be talking about the Dyke March, a derivation of the Pride Parade, which has a large focus on activism, advocacy, and lesbian visibility. Before we begin, I do want to talk a little bit about language, specifically around the word dyke, which used to be used as a derogatory term similar to queer, however, since then it has been reclaimed. The word is now used and widely accepted within the community, and the official name of the event is the Dyke March. So let's begin. The first known lesbian pride march took place in Vancouver, Canada in May of 1981 at the Bi-National Lesbian Conference. Around 200 people attended the march, marching through the streets of Vancouver, shouting, we're here, we're there, lesbians are everywhere. Later that year, in October of 1981, a now defunct organization called Lesbians Against the Right held the Dykes in the Streets March in Toronto with about 350 women. The first official Dyke March didn't happen until 1993. The march was planned during the already existing March on Washington for lesbian, gay, and bi equal rights and liberation on April 24th of that year. The Dyke March was organized by the Lesbian Avengers, a direct action organization which focused on advocacy and lesbian visibility. The New York chapter of the Lesbian Avengers organized all the logistics for the events, including the creation of a manifesto which stressed the importance and the necessity of grassroots lesbian activism. This was especially relevant considering the anti-LGBT bills that were being passed by the conservatives in Washington. The Lesbian Avengers handed out 8,000 flyers with the details of the march, and over 20,000 women ended up participating, marching all the way to the National Mall. Due to the huge success of the first Dyke March, the New York chapter of the Lesbian Avengers decided to hold another Dyke March that same year in June. This march, and all New York City dyke marches to follow did not have a permit. This is because members of the Lesbian Avengers became concerned that the main gay pride parade was becoming too close to corporations and losing its original political feel. Then and today, the dyke march allows no corporate floats, no corporate sponsors, and no merchandising. As a result, the dyke march has a strong political emphasis. The organizers of the Dyke March claim, the New York City Dyke March is a protest march, not a parade. It is our First Amendment right to protest, and until we are truly liberated, the New York City Dyke March is a protest march. At the march, the organizers handed out the same pamphlet that was created for the first march in Washington, D.C. San Francisco and Atlanta also had Dyke Marches that same year. The next year, in 1994, the New York City Dyke March occurred again, solidifying it as an annual tradition. It was also the 25th anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising, which meant that hundreds of thousands of people were already in New York City for the occasion. Also in 1994, New York City held the International Lesbian and Gay Association Conference, and because of that, that year's Dyke March was known as the International Dyke March. Today, dyke marches are held all over the world, including the original Washington, D.C., and in New York, San Francisco, London, Berlin, and several other cities across Canada and the United States. The dyke march is open to anyone who identifies as a dyke, while others are asked to stand on the sidewalks during the march. Most dyke marches today occur in the month of June, which coincides with the Pride Parade and the anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising. While the Pride Parade has become an international symbol for pride and celebrations, the Dyke March continues to lead an important movement for women within the community for advocacy, activism, and visibility. This includes raising awareness for the especially important topics around political advocacy and social justice. In their own words, the organizers of the Dyke March say, Thousands of dykes take the streets each year in celebration of our beautiful and diverse dyke lives to highlight the presence of dykes within our community and in protest of the discrimination, harassment, and violence we face in schools, on the job, and in our communities. To learn more about the history of the Dyke March, check out nycdykemarch.com.
And that concludes this episode of Queer History with Christopher Street Tours. Be sure to subscribe to our channel below and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Christopher Street Tours for more queer history. Until next time. Christopher Street Tours is an LGBTQ owned organization. Our mission is to make LGBTQ history accessible and engaging, sharing stories and uplifting voices from those who paved the way before us. For more information and resources, please visit ChristopherStreetTours.com.